Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer here at Infoblox, and today I'm here to give you a walkthrough of Infoblox's Blocks 1 DDI. So first, I'll walk you through how the current network is transforming, and then give you an overview of Blocks 1 DDI, and then provide some use cases for Blocks 1 DDI. Then finally, I'll walk with you through the product to give you some ideas what it looks like and what you can do. Then, we'll take a closer look at Blocks 1 DDI and close it out with a summary of what we just saw. Now let's talk about how the network is transforming. Organizations are starting to move majority of their infrastructure to the cloud through SaaS offerings. Organizations are also moving the network edge away from the data center and towards the branch offices and remote clients. And because of these two things, SD-WAN is simplifying the network for these organizations by making it possible to lock down their branch offices and keep them protected. Because of the SD-WAN solution, the need for a modified and improved edge DDI application is increasing, something that can be centrally managed with high reliability and performance and that can help complement the SD-WAN and help improve it. Blocks One is Infoblox's cloud platform in which we offer our services to our customers. Currently, Blocks One DDI has two applications that customers are using today, Blocks One DDI and Blocks One Threat Defense. However, Infoblox will continue to improve on these while adding additional options in the future. Blocks One DDI, however, is what we are talking about today, which is the ability to service all your DNS, DHP, and IPAM needs for your company and remote offices quickly. Blocks One DDI is the industry's first cloud managed DDI solution for remote site and branch office networks, which provides the best of breed DDI with local survivability, high performance, scalability, flexibility, and cost efficient for you to deploy the application anywhere, while giving you a centralized management across all your organizations. Blocks One DDI will support local DDI services on prem and at the branch, enable locally hosted DHCP and IPAM services with high availability, dynamic scaling required for thousands of branch offices, and a central management needed to manage the thousands of branch locations. Now let's look at some key advantages of cloud based DDI management by considering some widely deployed example use cases. First, let's compare how a server based DNS DHCP is traditionally deployed and managed compared to Blocks One DDI. Here you'll have manual upgrades to the software with new versions and patches. Issues include software versions and consistencies between branch locations, with some running the latest version of the software while others running the older version, which in this case will make you vulnerable when security patches have not been made. You also need to schedule upgrades for each location separately, which may not happen right away, and again, open you up to the same issues just stated. Not to mention, visibility is limited to each of these branch locations. These issues really start to be noticed with multinational customers, with tens of thousands of locations worldwide, where they are sick of having to patch individual vulnerabilities and releases daily, and sometimes still coming out of compliance because of the complexity. Now if you compare that to Blocks 1 DDI, all these issues magically go away. As Blocks 1 DDI pushes updates from the cloud to the devices automatically, an automatic provision occurs as new features are added to all Blocks 1 DDI appliances as they come out without you needing to lift a finger. Another deployment method is with router-based DNS and DHCP. This is where DHCP services are offered at remote locations and branch offices through local routers. This leads to device-centric approaches being managed individually. And here again, all previous issues already mentioned also apply here. This includes things like the site-to-site -site inconsistencies of configurations, only branch visibility, and manual provisioning and upgrade processes being cumbersome and error-prone. Now in the case of Blocks 1 DDI, all these issues disappear as everything is updated automatically and new features are pushed out immediately as they are released, so that you never miss out on anything and never have a security patch forgotten or unimplemented. And at the same time, the devices are all provisioned from the cloud platform, giving you management to all devices at the same time. In traditional on-prem DNS deployments, your DNS is queried to the central data center. When using DNS backhaul, end users may not connect to the closest connection in the cloud for SaaS applications. In cases of accessing Office 365 services, if you're sitting in a branch office on the west coast of the United States and your data center is on the east coast, your DNS query will be backhauled to your data center where it will be resolved and then it will be directed to your Office 365 closest to your data center and not your branch location. With Blocks 1 DDI, your DNS query will not only be resolved locally, but you will connect to the Office 365 server closest to your office, thus providing you a better user experience in terms of speed and latency compared to backhauling the query 
and also for connection to the SAS application itself. In addition, if your communication link for the branch office to your data center fails, your branch office will continue to operate as usual. Here, I'm logged into the CSP portal, and you'll notice I have lots of different tabs. You may or may not see everything you see here, depending on your licensing. Everything that I'll be showing you today will be everything you can see as of when I'm recording this with Blocks One DDI licensing. I plan to walk through everything and explain what everything does. So first, we'll start with the Manage tab. Inside the Manage tab, we have a tab for IPAM and DHCP, and inside the address space, you will see the entire network topology tree. The IP space acts as a storage for IP addresses that are unique to the particular space. Think of it as your own routing domain with its own IP addresses, where all IP addresses belong to the same IP space. If you're familiar with the on-premise devices, you will think of this as the network view. Blocks one DDI uses address blocks to group subnets. An address block is a parent network that contains other subnets. This in itself is not a subnet, but rather a container that contains the subnets themselves. Now subnets are as their name states, they are subnets of IP addresses. Once created, you can start to add ranges and fix addresses and the like to them. A subnet can be considered a parent network for address ranges and fix addresses with which it is associated. An address range is a pool of IP addresses for which Blocks1 DDI allocates IP addresses during DHCP. So, you can use address ranges for your subnets, so Blocks1 DDI can assign IP addresses to GHCP clients within the specified address range. You can add things like DHCP options and DHCP exclusion ranges, which are a specified range of IP addresses residing within the DHCP range that removes IPs from the pool of available IPs within that range. Now before I move on, a fixed address represents a persistent link between an IP address and a MAC address or a client identifier or a circuit ID or remote ID and a DHCP relay agent option through DHCP option 82. You may want to configure fixed addresses for network devices such as routers and email servers that are not frequently moved from network to network. Now, moving on, you're able to inherit values from the branch above it. For example, a range that we just showed is inheriting its values from the subnet branch. And this works for every branch up, such as subnets inherit from the address blocks and address blocks inherit from the IP spaces. Now, DHCP config profiles allows you to assign on-prem hosts to different DHCP properties, such as lease times, DHCP options, DDNS enablements, and create IPv4 filters. With these, you can quickly assign DHCP options for many different on-prem hosts. Option spaces are a collection of DHCP options that are predefined by industry standards from option 0 to option 124, and custom options that are not standardized from option code 125 to 255. Here, you can assign the data type and the code to assign the data type to, including whether or not for the option to accept multiple values. All in all, it makes it much easier to customize the options and for easier inputs when assigning many different options to many different on-prem hosts. Option groups can be created for pre-configured DHP options that can use both option spaces and nested option groups. Option groups can then be used inside of things such as the IP spaces, address blocks, subnets, and other places to quickly assign DHP options to larger or smaller amounts of devices. With IPv4 filters, you're able to assign groups of devices to receive a particular set of DHP options. This is useful, as by default, regardless of the subnet that the DHP client is in, devices that use DHCP that also match the filter criteria receive the DHP options you configure here give you much more fine-grained control over the DHCP. Infoblox hosts are data objects that contain DNS and DHCP and IPAM data for assigned addresses. You can assign multiple IPv4 addresses to a host. When you create a host, you're specifying the name to address and the address to the name mappings for the IP addresses that are assigned to the host. An HA group, or a high availability group, is a collection of two on-prem hosts which are located on the same IP space and that can serve the same set of leases, and that if one went down, the other could continue working. Under DNS, the Zones tab allows you to create two types of zones. The authoritative zone is a zone for which the local server references its own data and responding to queries. The local server is authoritative for the data in this zone and responsible for queries for the data without referencing other servers. The forward zone 
defines where you want to forward queries to, such as another DNS server, when people query for specific zones. DNS config profiles allow you to assign customized DNS configuration to your on-prem host that are running DNS services. If you don't assign a customized DNS configuration profile, it will use the default global settings profile. DNS server groups is a number of DNS servers that are combined that allows you to apply different configurations to different scenarios. However, you must at least have one primary and one secondary server. You may also nest DNS server groups inside other DNS server groups. And as such, you may have nested primary and nested secondary if desired. To effectively manage your core network services, you can grant legitimate hosts access to specific tasks and operations using access control lists. You can configure a named ACL and then apply it to multiple operations. When you define a named ACL, you can add access control types such as IPv4 addresses, IPv4 networks, and nested named ACLs, and then grant each entry in the list the allow or deny permission. On-prem hosts deliver secure, reliable, and centrally managed DNS, DHCP, and IPAM services at each location it's deployed. Here is where you will be able to manage and configure each on-prem host and enable services desired at each location, thus giving you a high-level view for all your remote offices' deployments. The join token is a special purpose secret used to authenticate a virtual on-prem host to automatically associate itself with a corresponding user account and establish a connection with Blocks1 DDI. To deploy a virtual appliance, you must first create a join token and issue it to the corresponding on-prem host when you set up the machine. You can use the same join token to deploy multiple virtual appliances. You can also create as many join tokens as you need to use them for different purposes. An AnyCast configuration incorporates multiple on-prem hosts as its members, and an on-prem host may also be a member of multiple AnyCast configurations itself thus enabling you to have redundancy, speed, and scalability. If one site loses connection, we will still be able to reach out to any number of additional DNS servers, as long as they are part of the AnyCast configuration. The Infoblox Data Connector is a utility designed to collect DNS queries and response data and security logs from specified sources. It transfers the collected data to defined destinations such as Blocks1, Mass Reporting Server, and generic syslog sources. The Data Connector currently supports integrations with Splunk using Splunk Forwarder and generic syslog with SIF and LEAF message formatting. The Manage tab is where you sync up the source, destination, and ETL filters so that you can send the correct data from the desired destinations to the desired sources. The sources are the place for which you will grab data from. For Data Connector to collect corresponding data and security logs, and for specific flows to function properly, you must set up your sources. Destinations is the opposite of data sources in that it is the place where you want to send the data once collected from the data source. ETL configurations can be thought of as filters. ETL in this case stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. The ETL filters exclude specific information and the unfiltered data will be transferred to the configured destinations. Once you have configured the destination, source, and ETL filters, you simply need to add them to the source configuration. The Cloud Service Portal displays notifications for specific events. Infoblox automatically dedupes events and prevents you from being flooded with notifications. However, you still can decide when you want to be notified of specific events. You can configure the threshold for notifications under the Notification Settings tab. Things such as CPU usage, host health status, and more may trigger events. You may configure SMTP email services, or you can add additional service integrations into the CSP through the Service Integrations tab under Manage and Notifications. Under the License Entitlement section, you'll see a license assigned for your organization. The license currently available include Advanced, Business, and Essentials. Here, you'll see that I have an early adapter's license. However, this was in place for some of our earliest customers, and you will not see this anymore. Blocks1 DDI provides tags that you can use to identify and group objects in your address spaces. A tag is a label that consists of a key and a value that you define. Tags are useful when you want to categorize objects such as subnets for specific purposes, such as by location, so you can easily identify them based on the tags you assign to them. 
Here, we can see that I created a tag, and when I go to objects inside the CSP, we can assign that tag to the objects. We can also revoke tags. Do note that once it's revoked, you will not be able to use it again for all the objects it's assigned to, until you add a new tag and assign them. The Cloud Service Portal provides role-based access control in which you can manage users' access based on the roles and permissions. With the ability to define access policies, you can restrict service-related responsibilities to certain user roles or user groups. A user role defines a set of permissions or responsibilities that the users have the ability to perform and will be used in the access policy. A user group contains a list of users that need to have identical access and will be used in the access policy. Finally, the access policy is how you can assign the user role to many users through the user groups that you created. Under Downloads, you will find the on-prem host and the host appliance factory reset to download. Audit logs are where you can see the changes made to specific resources in the CSP portal, and if the changes that occurred was successful or not. This is good for things such as finding who disabled a service on an on-prem host. You can configure Blocks1 DDI to display or export DNS and DHCP logs from your on-prem hosts. For Blocks1 DDI to properly pull the logs data, you must have on-prem hosts set up and configured to service DNS and or DHCP. Otherwise, no data can be generated. An additional note is that you can see service logs for specific on-prem hosts quickly by selecting them and going to the service service logs. When you do so, the on-prem host will automatically be entered and you can choose to increase the time frame for the logs on how far back you want to grab the data. Once you hit view logs, you'll see all the data associated with the on-prem host. Now back from the demo, let's talk about the deployment options. Blocks1 DDI has multiple options on how you can deploy it. You can deploy it as a VM or a Docker container, and you may also choose to buy a software appliance which contains the on-prem host with the Infoblox B105 hardware device. Each deployment method can also be done with a high availability pair. If you're familiar with the NAS way of high availability, Blocks1 DDI is a little bit different. Rather than having an active-passive appliance, both appliances are always active. There are currently three pricing tiers, Essentials, Business, and Advanced. The pricing for usage changes with each tier, and additional licenses can be applied for any number of appliances. As such, there is no limit on the usage under the three tiers. Only the features that are offered with the three tiers are varied. This means, if you only have one query per second or a million queries per second, you can still get any of the three pricing tiers. Do note that if you already have the NIOS appliance, then Blocks1 integrates the information on the Blocks1 cloud, and as such, you can centrally manage all your enterprise data center DDI appliances from the cloud alongside with the Blocks1 DDI appliances. Here we can see all the solutions Infoblox offers to help you keep up and running at all times and keep you connected to the internet. With the SD-WAN technology, Infoblox is still being used. However, with Blocks1 Threat Defense and Blocks1 DDI, Infobox is helping you solidify your solution and improve in their connectivity, and also allowing you to keep your existing solution and improve on it, as well as a single management plane for all your DDI requirements. As a summary, Box1 DDI provides you with a superior service at the network edge and reliability and performance needed for an ever-changing network world, giving you the ability to support tens to thousands of remote offices with ease through a centrally managed solution and automate services deployment and control all while improving on your current SD-WAN, SAS, and NIOS solutions that are in place today. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any of the other experts on Infoblox on the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time, and have a great rest of your day.